Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of WandaVision Episode 7, which, spoiler warning, confirms Agnes as the witch, Agatha Harkness, in a basement dungeon that I wish this blue dungeon was. Give me a Baphomet yak head any day of the week and I'll yak your ear off about it. Look, there is so much hidden in this episode, so it's time for another shot-by-shot -shot breakdown of everything you missed to try to make sense of this and scare you just a little bit. Let's get started. Okay, you may have noticed how each episode, the way Wanda says previously on WandaVision, gets progressively less and less cheerful. Previously on WandaVision. 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 Reflecting her worsening mental state as this fourth wall illusion collapses around her. The jig is up, folks. The fourth wall is broken. And now Agatha takes control, reframing this hex as her own show. Agatha all along. Wanda's cover has a pattern that's, you guessed it, hexagonal. So is Vision's pillowcase, but notice he's not there. Wanda's pillowcase ain't hexagonal. Maybe reflecting that she is not really part of this hex, but in her shame, she chooses to blanket herself in the hex to try to escape her reality. The boys' Wii remotes glitch back into GameCube controllers and then to Atari joysticks and then Uno cards. Now, Uno was the game played by a young Monica Rambeau with her scroll friend in Captain Marvel, a relationship I believe we might be revisiting. Now, listen to the radio as Wanda makes cereal. Radio station WNDA for Wunda. Also notice the DJ calls the children of Westview little ghosts. Maybe another clue pointing to the theory I pitched last week that the children who just showed up in Westview could be the souls of dead children. Maybe the children who Agatha killed over the years. Or one of those kids could be reflected on this milk carton as it glitches, now showing a missing child photo. Now this is after the milk just warped from almond milk to vitamin D milk. In other words, something vegan to the milk with the most fat in it. Now, I'm not saying they're eating babies. Oh yeah, I kinda am, because clearly this hex is for the children, for Agatha to consume their life force. I actually did bite a kid once. Now Wanda Serial has a circus theme with a clown on it and a circus tent maze on the back, which is just like the circus theme Wanda's expansion turned the sword camp into. Similarly, Vision and Darcy kind of get lost in a maze trying to get away from this circus back to the heart of Westview. Now these opening credits are a fusion of three modern sitcoms, the piano music based on The Office. rapidly shifting titles based on the Happy Endings intro. Happy Endings was a show produced by the Russo brothers before they moved on to Marvel. And then this final title, White and Red on Black, is based on the Modern Family logo and all these home confession cams, handheld camera movement, all based on the Modern Family cinematography as well. But within these flashing titles are a bunch of fun details. The license plate number is 122822, a nod to the birth date of the late great Stan Lee, December 28, 1922. Another title says, Sorry We're Wanda, as in Wanda being synonymous for the word closed, the way she has closed herself off from the outside world. And there's another one in straight up kidnapper letters. I know what you are doing, Wanda. Very, I know what you did last summer. I like the idea that this could be coming from Agatha, shaming Wanda into closing herself off, leaving her kids vulnerable for nom nom numbing. Now another title shows us some fridge magnets with B and S visible in frame, as in this Westview sitcom is b, -b, b bullshit And then from Hayward's new sword camp, the hex has expanded so you can see its top edges are also angled, not unlike, folks, a circus tent, like the circus the sword agents are now trapped in. Now this is a 3D hexagonal prism. Like every angle you look at it, there's a hexagon, which shouldn't be possible. Like think about it, how do you link a bunch of planner hexagons in a way that they all fit neatly together? So this is a theoretical shape, like a tesseract, which in physics is actually a fourth dimensional hypercube that's really only capable of being seen by human eyes as a 3D cube as this fourth dimensional prism passes through our 3D dimension. I bring all this up because this hyperhex could be a similarly trans-dimensional phenomenon phenomenon, a hex from a dimension beyond our perception that passes through our 3D dimension and then warps the nature of the system within it. And I lost ya. Look, if you really want to get creeped out, check out this agent when Hayward plans to well, probably nuke a New Jersey town. Yeah, I feel very lucky. What's happening with the broadcast? What the hell is that movement? 
it kind of looks reversed. Or scroll-versed. Now over in the circus, Agent Monty is now the strong man, Darcy's an escape artist. You'll know some of the employees wear jumpsuits with a circusy version of the sword crest. Later there's a booth for Fool the Guesser, which I feel like is what this show is trying to do to us. Back home, the weather shows sunny weather with a chance of clouds. Later when Darcy drives, she comments how it never rains in Westview, yet it does on them. And this is right after the Nexus commercial in which dark rain clouds form. Billy asks about Uncle P and Wanda says, Don't believe anything that man said. He is not your uncle. Who is he? <laughs> Uh-huh, and notice how Wanda threateningly points the remote at these boys? They look shaken as if mommy might change them the way their game controllers were just warped. And then Agnes arrives and she's wearing purple, which is the color of Agatha Harkness. We actually see Agatha Harkness's ornate purple dress and boots for a brief second at the end of the episode, but she has been rocking Agatha's brooch the whole time. The whole time? <laughs> And we've seen all the clues up until this point. Agnes is an amalgamation of Agatha Harkness. Pretty much every word of her mouth has been suspect. The devil's in the details, Bev. That's not the only place he is. So Agatha, of course, is the witch who often accompanies Wanda in the comics. Now she's not always evil. Most of the time she's kind of neutral or actually kind of a good guy, but in the West Coast Avengers run that WandaVision seems partly based on, Agatha gaslights Wanda into thinking she has kids who are actually pieces of Mephisto's soul, as Pietro called them last episode. Unleash hell, demon spawn! Demon spawn. Now here Agnes says, I think I got there in the nick of time because she was one split end away from cutting her own bangs. Nick of time. And her rabbit is Senor Scratchy, which some think could be a nod to Agatha's son, Nicholas Scratch. And cutting her own bangs, Agnes might have been afraid Wanda is about to cut, aka erase her bangs. These things she got by, you know, banging. Am I reaching? Shut up. And Agnes says, I do have a suspicious mole on my back that I just can't see. It uh, boundaries. I get it. <laughs> Say no more. Moles, of course, are associated with witches. People thought it was a mark of the devil. But notice how the camera cuts away right as Agnes lifts her top. But look at Wanda's face and Tommy's face. They're not just weirded out by Agnes doing this. They are disgusted by whatever it is they see. I'm assuming there's some hideous festering mole under there. And Wanda says, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. <gasps> I'm fine. I'm fine. She has now become Mrs. <laughs> Hart. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Both of them channeling that scene and get out. <laughs> Stop it. No, 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 no. Stop it. And kind of me when Joker says we live in a society. <laughs> no. Stop it. No, 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 no. no, no, no. No. And by the way, if you want to support my insanity, you can check out all of our great merch options at NeuroxRoastMerch.com. This is our latest obsession shirt, An Unusual Couple. It's a way to support the channel directly and get a great shirt. Okay, so Jimmy receives Darcy's cataract email. And if you look at his screen, Darcy ends this email with, this is a decoy communique he sent to Vision's office. So that answers who sent Vision that email in episode five. It was a ploy by Hayward to shake Vision out of the trance to try to get him to leave Westview so that Hayward could retrieve his sentient weapon. Monica meets up with the sword unit led by Major Goodner. My mother would appreciate your loyalty. She's not the only one we're loyal to, Captain. So is Goodner the big mystery engineer the past two episodes were setting up to be like a big deal that everyone thought was gonna be Reed Richards? But let's think about this. Goodner likely worked for SWORD's space program. I'm actually assuming these are the astronauts who didn't report back to Hayward, but instead of them just not having the nerve, maybe they just thought he was a dick undoing Maria Rambeau's legacy. And I have a suspicion that this unit is a SWORD division of scrolls. Maybe the unit Fury is attached to on that space station. Goodner could be a grown up version of Taylor daughter, Monica's Uno playing pal, steering clear of Hayward because unlike Maria and Monica, he views aliens as threats. And they're not yet revealing themselves to Jimmy Woo because he brainstorms scrolls as possible perpetrators of all this. But they could totally trust him. Just look at that smile he walked up with. He probably begged to stop and get him coffee. He's the f Best. Now the tag number 9219R are probably for Rover. 9219 could be a nod to the year 1992, which would have been in the window of time. Sorin, her daughter, and the other scrolls were hidden in Earth's orbit. That would be 1989 to 1995. Maybe something big happened in 1992. Maybe 1992 was the first year they built this river. Darcy tells Vision, Fine, I'll go out with you, but I'm ordering the lobster. Now remember, lobster was on the menu back in the first episode. So I like this little thing of Darcy being kind of a stan. Because even though she's in the hex, she might subconsciously 
potentially still be shipping herself with her sitcom Dream Boo. Now this Hula girl could be a nod to the one in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Remember Sky had one of these in those framework episodes. That was the event where Coulson ranted about the Hydra soap that we've talked about before. As the house glitches, the stork returns and then Moana says this to the confession cam. I can't fix it. Do you think maybe this is what you deserve? What? You're not supposed to talk. Huh, now at first this reminded me of the moment in the office where a crew member appears on screen for the first time and everyone's like, what the f they're actually committing to this format? Modern Family just pretended like there's no reason for a documentary, which kind of made it creepy why camera crew would be filming Claire and Phil hooking up in weird role-playing scenarios. Ugh. Now, this is my favorite detail episode. Later, the Agatha all along sequence revealed Agatha to be the one behind the camera. Agatha, probably the director of this show. But this male voice here is actually Catherine Hahn's voice pitched shifted downward. Do you think maybe this is what you deserve? Do you think maybe this is what you deserve? Now next, this commercial for Nexus Antidepressants, and holy shit, my theory was right. Roll that clip, John. Do not be surprised if this next commercial in the modern family era is a stereotypical pharmaceutical ad. Medication for anxiety, depression. Folks, this doesn't always happen. And if Mephisto ain't in this show, this might be the only vindication I get. Anyway, Nexus, the reality of your choice, the world revolving around you. Yeah, these are all references to Wanda Maximoff being a Nexus being in Marvel lore, an individual who exists separate from any one reality or timeline. This is how Wanda was able to flip realities in House of M, and this tells us that this series is probably setting up the Marvel multiverse. Actually, you can see this bottle behind Ithmar there reads multi, probably for multivitamin, but the word multi's there, so this is a big deal. Even if Evan Peters Pietro is not Quicksilver from the Fox X-Men universe, clearly with this hex expanding and expanding, that could be one way realities rewritten in a House of M way to create the multiverse a crisis that they'll have to deal with in Loki and Spider-Man 3 in Multiverse of Madness. Bear in mind, characters like Jean Grey and Kang the Conqueror are also technically Nexus beings, so I think we'll get a much clearer definition of what exactly this means with the TVA and Loki. Look at that word, nexopromicide. That suffix side means something that kills, like spermicide. So this is 10.3% Nexus promoting killing, as in Wanda is using her Nexus status to reset reality to kill off 10.3% of people. No more mutants. Or you could read this as an active ingredient that kills off or reduces by 10.3% one's affinity to use the Nexus to chaotically rewrite reality, giving Wanda greater control over what would normally be super chaotic. I love the way this commercial shot. This woman lays down in bed, but then they rebuild the set so that the bed is on a wall that she steps away from. So her reality was literally turned on its axis so that she can actively step forward from that depression sinkhole on a level plane. In the corner of the screen it reads, see our ad in the Westview Gazette, a nod of the newspaper that keeps showing up with ads for appliances reflecting vision as an appliance in Hayward's eyes. And the voiceover also says, ask your doctor which could be a nod to Doctor Strange being the doc who helps break Wanda's addiction to this reality warping in Multiverse of Madness. And it ends with this woman stepping to the right into this red glow, as if to say the way forward little lady is to take this Nexus med, become queen of your own reality warp into a red tinted hex. Yes, I know while I'm going through these Easter eggs and theories, you gotta look at this dumb face with this dumb beard on it, but that doesn't make me a neck beard. I like to clean it up around the edges. To do that, I have to do a bit of shaving. My favorite part of that is how smooth my skin feels afterwards. Well, thanks to our sponsor, Harry's, I am feeling smoother than ever. So Harry's is a personal care brand that has reinvented the way you shave, helping you to shave in a premium, hassle-free way. Their German manufactured blades are sharper than ever, and they're still the same low price of only $2 each. They have this high quality weighted handle with a texturized rubber grip and a five blade razor cartridge that feels really great in your hand and does an incredible job. I also love their shaving gel which is great for sensitive skin. Okay, so I'm really just like going down and it's like, it smells really good. And the five blade, it's just super smooth. It's getting that nice smooth feel to it. And like, it's so like nice and creamy. It smells really good too. And by getting Harry's, you can help Harry's support great causes as they give 1% of their global sales to nonprofit organizations that provide mental health care to men, veterans, and LGBTQ plus youths in need. Redeem your trial set for just $3 when you go to harrys.com slash new rockstars. You'll get a five blade razor, weighted handle, travel cover, and their phone mean shave gel. It's an incredibly great deal, but act fast while supplies last. And then Billy tells Agnes, You're quiet, Agnes. On the inside. 
a signal that Billy, as a telepath deafened by all the noise in Westview, is unable to read Agatha's thoughts, nor the thoughts of the quiet Senor Scratchy. Actually, notice when called out, Agatha freezes her hand just over the rabbit, almost as if ready to activate him into a new form. And Agnes mentions Ralph. Ralph says I sugarcoat things, but you try telling a 10-year-old that his mother is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Now, on the table before her are these violet flowers with leafy stems. These look like the flowers that are all over her yard. The leaves look like what Billy was just feeding to the rabbit, or it could have been spinach, or it could have been these leaves. My theory is that this plant is the Wundagor Everbloom, the plant that grows in Agatha Harkness's yard in the comics that, once eaten, gives one visions of what life could be via feelings of pain. In the Tom King Vision comics, Sparky the dog had eaten this plant, discovered after Virginia beat him to death, and I believe Agatha killed Sparky for digging up this plant in her yard, and that she has been drugging Wanda with this plant all along, all along. Think about it, the plant that she first brought her in episode one, a plant tied with a purple ribbon, the dinner in episode one, her booze in episode two, the lavender spray in episode five, and now in a medicinal form, notice that Wanda pops pills. And what does Agnes do for her when she arrives? Bruise her tea. I'm assuming some herbal tea. Herb, hold on, herb. She even makes an herb out of herb. And why is she doing this? Well, the drugging keeps Wanda in the fantasy so that Agatha can consume the life force of her children. Now, did Agnes actually gobble up these kids like the witch in the Hansel and Gretel story? No, 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 they're probably locked up somewhere or part of some kind of ritual somewhere deep in that dungeon as they are being, what, reassumed into Mephisto, maybe drained of their energy. But like House of M, I think this is all gonna end with Wanda not being able to hold on to these kids. Now, Monica activates a spectrometer in the rover cockpit. This measures radiation, and it's the same device Bruce Banner used to track the Tesseract in the Avengers. Put the spectrometers on the roof and calibrate them for gamma rays. And Monica pushes herself through. This audio is from the Captain Marvel film. We actually heard this softly as Monica unblipped back in episode four. Now in Captain Marvel, this is a scene where Carol and Maria and Fury were about to launch. I can't leave Monica. Mom, it's okay, I can stay with Grandma and Papa. <laughs> There's no way I'm going, baby, it's too dangerous. Maybe I could fly up and meet you halfway. Oh, only if you learn to glow like your Auntie Carol. But I love the visuals of this. Monica's face stretches from itself, like in the movie Contact, when Jodie Foster has that interdimensional travel and her face is here, but it's also here. Scott Derrickson actually said this visual inspired Doctor Strange's trip through the multiverse. And I bring it up because that is essentially what is happening here. Monica splits into a spectrum of her various roles in her life. The moment she unblipped looking for her mother in the hospital, then an astronaut, then a government agent, and then Geraldine. Think about it, this is kind of the order of her life priorities as she's progressing forward. Daughter first, and then starbound explorer, and then country serving agent, and then maximum selflessness, even in defiance of her own country, a sacrificial empath just trying to talk an Avenger off a ledge. But then Monica pulls all of herself into one and then sticks a superhero landing. She actually does one later this episode too. Her eyes are now glowing blue and she sees the Westview anomaly in its true irradiated state, kind of like Neo see in the Matrix. Folks, we just saw Monica Rambeau become Photon, an Avenger with powers similar to Captain Marvel. And it's fitting that her transformation matches how Carol went binary. How? By sinking all of her past selves, all of her past stumbles and all of her past arising. But uh, I gotta say, this one looks way cooler. And notice how her clothes underneath match the color scheme and clothes of Photon in the comics. Dennis the Mailman now works for delivery service Presto with a rabbit logo on his hat. There is a Pixar short titled Presto about a rabbit feuding with his magician on stage during a show. Similar to the way Senor Scratchy ran amok during Vision's magic show, something Agatha just revealed was her doing. So I believe Senor Scratchy is either Agatha's son, Nicholas Scratch, and that might be who Evan Peters Pietro is. Think about it, rabbits are quick little speedsters. The other option is Senior Scratchy could be Old Scratch, Agatha's husband, Ralph. But I'm not gonna go as far to say that is the mailman. But the fact that he is wearing this rabbit logo means that he is like all these things are under Agatha's control. I'm wondering what is in those Brad G. Lay packages though. Maybe some supplies to help Agatha maintain this drugging. Now Agnes breaks up the heartfelt moment between Monica and Wanda. Wanda, Young you lady, have to. I think you overstayed your welcome. Run along, dear. 
young lady. Dear, it's like little old lady colloquialisms. Hey, dearie, why don't you take a Werther's? I'm missing an CIS. Now, in Agnes's home, there are <gasps> hexagon patterns on the cups. And then, <gasps> yo gabba gabba on the TV. Listen to them, they're saying, jump, jump, jump almost as if inviting Wanda to take the plunge into the basement. Now, some say you can see the chair move on its own behind Wanda as she turns to look at Senor Scratchy, but this is really a trick of the eye, folks. See, the camera starts in a pan and then curves around Wanda's face right as she turns her head, so you don't really notice the curve as much. And in doing so, it makes that chair behind her look like it's just suddenly scooting itself behind the wall, but it's just the way the camera's pointed. But then Wanda sees this cicada. Now, cicadas are said to symbolize immortality. These things sleep for like 17 years before they hatch. There could be a parallel here with Agatha, who might stay dormant for years and years and then re-emerge to make her move. Personally, I can't help but see this as a nod to the Silence of the Lambs, the moment Clary Starling sees the moth in the home of Buffalo Bill, and that's how she realizes she is in the home of the killer they've been looking for, a killer who is hiding horrors in the basement. And down there, Wanda finds this dungeon, my heart's desire. Now first notice how the aspect ratio widens, telling us that Wanda has left the hex temporarily. This dungeon is in the real world. World. Now in this place, folks, an animal head across the way. This is either a goat, a ram, I'm thinking, maybe a yak, something Baphomet-like. Demonic faces are carved into the pillars above hexagons with golden symbols etched in. You can see more animal bones in a red lit cabinet, a winged creature in another corner, and of course the big one, this glowing book. Most likely the Darkhold, the ancient Marvel Book of the Dead created by Chthon, the demon who in the comics cursed Wanda Maximoff with her powers as a baby. The Darkhold appeared in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It had a different cover. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. unfortunately is not really considered canon by Kevin Feige, so this is probably just gonna be a new version of the Darkhold. This symbol on it looks interesting. It's like two keys joining together to open a central lock. Now I have speculated this book could be from the Camartage Library, which would root Wanda's sorcery in Doctor Strange's Eldritch Magic, which could explain its hexagonal geometric shape. Like many other sorcerer spells take these interesting angular geometric shapes. Now, some are saying this could be the Necronomicon, which was derived from the Darkhold. I think it's more likely to just be the Darkhold, and it's going to be used to justify all the supernatural elements in the MCU, like Blade. But here, this is likely the source of the hex that this witch is putting over Wanda, because, folks, this is a satanic temple, and the witch who occupies it reveals herself. The name's Agatha Harkness. Lovely to finally meet you, dear. And then an amazing revised intro sequence revealing it was Agatha all along. Notice how Agatha starts by floating to the ground to help this domestic family, like Mary Poppins, who is a witch, don't forget that. And then the lyrics say she pulled every evil string. But it's interesting, it doesn't say anything about her creating this hex, it just makes her sound like she's meddling in the hex. But all this includes Senior Scratchy, Herb, Pietro killing Sparky. She lied to Vision and it looks like it was to get him to leave and get him out of the picture so that she and Pietro could move in on those kids. This whole sequence, the music sounds like it's the monster's theme, but notice the female vocals here actually done by Catherine Hahn herself. Pulling every evil string. It's been Agatha all along. Now notice how Agatha picnicked as Pietro arrived. Perhaps that creepy appendage we saw in the mirror was her magic pulling him into the house. Now Pietro also appears in the post credit scene of this episode, surprising Monica when she snoops into the basement. Snooper's gonna snoop. Now you'll notice Monica's eyes glow purple, but I don't think this means Agatha's magic has hold of her because she still reacts cognitively to Pietro. She's not in a trance yet. I just think as Photon, her eyes illuminate to reveal energy that wouldn't normally be visible to the naked eye, like how they glowed blue earlier. But interesting here, notice Agnes's car has a Connecticut license plate, not a New Jersey one. Agnes did mention how her and Ralph's anniversary was June 2nd, the day the Salem witch trials began in 1692. Salem is in Massachusetts, but at that time, witch trials and executions were happening all over New England, including Connecticut. But as Monica peeks in through the door, look at the window to the right. A shadow moves, independent of Monica's reflection. This is something else inside. I'm thinking this could be Senor Scratchy turned into Pietro and presto, darted over to Monica to catch her. Look folks, I'm not gonna try to fool you. Agatha is clearly the villain of the show. Westview is her operation, but she's got associations with witchcraft, with dark magic, and there's still a very good chance she has a silent partner that we haven't met yet. And all signs are pointing to Mephisto. Not just the devil in the details, not just demon spawn. A Paul Bettany interview was released this week suggesting there is still an unseen major cameo popping up. There is one 
character has not been revealed and it is very exciting. It's an actor that I've longed to work with all of my life. And in the same interview, Paul Bettany seemed really coy about Mephisto in particular. I can't speak to right now because I'm worried about getting uh, fired. So as great as this Agatha reveal is, I think most of us did see it coming. So there is probably one deeper mystery left in the shadows. The darkest is yet to come. Hey, by the way, if you want to win a free PS5, our merch partners Epic Hero are doing a giveaway. All you got to do, subscribe to the channel Epic Hero Labs, and then head over to epicheroshop.com slash giveaway for more ways to enter. You can continue this nerdy conversation on New Rockstar's official Discord server by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash new rockstars. Follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstar subscribe to new rock stars for all your wandavision questions thank you for watching and uh singing along with me who gets his theories 10.3 percent right it was eric voss all along oh.